Hello, welcome back to theCUBE here in New York City. I'm John Furrier, your host. We're here in New York connecting Silicon Valley, our CUBE studio in Palo Alto with our CUBE studio here on Wall Street, the New York Stock Exchange, our CUBE East access point, we're calling it Super Node, Super Studio. A lot of fun. We're really getting all the conversations as New York continues to surge and accelerate the entrepreneurial activity, investor activity, and more important, all the customers are here, certainly in the finance side, but also as AI goes mainstream, everyone in New York is a potential customer of Star. That's why the scene's so hot. Jake's here, CUBE alumni with Auth Z is here. Jake, great to see you. And Thanks for reminding me of the CUBE interview at KubeCon in 2022. Great to see you and congratulations on your success. We'll dig into it. Cool, thanks for having me. Yeah, it seems like just yesterday, doesn't it? <laughs> I know, Detroit was a great event. North America's coming up. Um, we had John on from Workbench, who's the co-founder, great great firm, big, a big fan of those guys. They, they, they did stuff early. They saw things early before, before it's fashionable. Now the enterprise is hot. So I'm psyched for those guys. Um, you're kind of in a similar situation where you saw things early, wasn't the conventional wisdom of the crowd, and then now it's hot. Um, let's go into what you guys do. First, explain what the company's doing, main value proposition, and then we'll dig in. Yeah, so in all said, we build um, authorization software for enterprises. So it's kind of built into the name, but roughly what we're doing is we're making this sort of like large scale authorization available to businesses. And it's super important that they have access to this because it's guarding all of their data, all of their internal data, their customer to customer interactions. It's helping them build these rich, um, we call them delightful experiences into their products that are built around and centered around the idea of sharing data and making data available from person to person. And now more and more machine to machine. What was the origination story? Um, did you guys did pretty things different? You bootstrapped, got some critical mass, you had some customer traction. Take us through the origination. What was different at that time? Yeah. Um, well, we've lived this problem in the past. So in the past, we built a company called DevTable, and out of that came a product called Quay. Quay was the first private Docker registry. And when you think about, you have the concept of a public or open Docker registry, and what is the difference between that and a private one? It's authorization, right? right? That's all it is. <laughs> so we, we had these problems kind of from day one of making sure that we were doing things the right way, only giving out data that people actually had uh, access to. Um, I built a really cool capture the flag game that got us kind of a, a little bit of attention and notoriety early on about, you know, some of our competitors maybe weren't as secure as they should have been. So that was, you know, we've been sort of living and breathing this problem space for a long time. Um, then in 2019, Google released a paper called the Zanzibar paper. Um, I read the paper halfway through it. I'm like, this provides a solution to the problem that we've been facing for so long. It's a blueprint to go and build that solution. And it's not something that you can go and buy from Google. It's wired through in all of Google's products, but it's not something that you can buy and use yourself. So I said, why don't we take the concepts of this paper and turn it into a business? Bring this, this concept to all of the other businesses in the space. And Google obviously had scale. They were, you know, Borg is well, well known internally at Google that became Kubernetes. So you, saw, you start to see the rise of what, what they had, which was unique to Google. I mean, SREs, cyber liability engineers, they invented that category by their own need. Right. But not every enterprise is Google. Right. So this is where it's interesting. So take us through the next step. What, because everyone knows authorization, they know, they see it on their devices, they know databases, all kinds of data needs access. The access controls are hot. Now with LLMs, who's got access to the data is now, everyone's talking about that, but you go to the front end of that. Now today, fast forward, what are some of the things you guys are doing? What are some of the traction points? Yeah, I mean, traction points, we just raised a series A earlier this year. Um, obviously that was on the back of what we consider pretty great metrics. Um, we have a lot of, a lot of customers at this point, um, many of them aren't referenceable because of the fact that we're sort of security software yeah. um, and we're open core to boot. Um, but some of the things that we're doing today are we're helping customers to, like I said, build those delightful experiences. Um, we're helping our customers to make sure that they are ready for the next phase of yeah. their growth and their scalability. And we find customers are scaling on all kinds of dimensions. They're scaling with user traffic. That's the really obvious one. They could also be scaling on velocity, right? Feature velocity, time to market. They might be scaling geographically. Our system works uh, seamlessly across multiple geographies. So we're, we're just getting in there and we're helping these people get ready to uh, accelerate for the next phase of whatever what, their What use cases uh, are you guys looking at? What problems are you solving specifically? Yeah, um, user to user sharing, point to point sharing and things like marketplaces, um, sharing and online gaming, uh, controlling access to things. Medical records is a big one. Um, banking. So we have banks as customers and 
they're using us to make sure that people aren't getting access to information uh, that they shouldn't have access to and that that's secure and flexible moving forward. But the one I'm really excited about right now is AI. Yeah. Um, we've got this new world where everybody is talking about RAG and setting AI loose on their data. And it's like, how do you make sure that those AI models and the agents that we're about to see come up, how do you make sure that they're only getting access to the things that they should have access to based on the user that they're acting on behalf of, Yeah. right? An enterprise has all kinds of data, sensitive employee data, financial data, plans for the future, strategic things, right? If you're operating on behalf of uh, an employee in the, I don't know, the finance department, right? They shouldn't have access to uh, the, the company's strategic plans for product moving forward. You know, that's that to me, I've been saying on theCUBE with Dave Vellante for the past eight years, just I mean, maybe even longer than that, because cloud was great, because cloud was horizontally scalable. So yeah, and great, that's cool, scale up, scale down. But the vertical specialization in the apps were domain specific, so, and that's a data problem. So, okay, data's in the apps, and, but like Dave, I said, Dave, you gotta get this thing going where you got horizontally scalable data. Yeah. So how do you make that, how do you make data freely available? Because at runtime, latency is everything. So I'm an application and I wrote an application, I'm generating something, I have to go get data. That's a really interesting concept. So how do you make that data? So this has been like one of the big problems now you're seeing at this open table format, just starting to see data guardrails being built. This becomes like, I think the next big thing, and I wanted to get your reaction to this because I think more, Solving with a centralized database is not the answer because you can't do round trips if you've got sub millisecond response time needed. We're getting the processes up there, so okay, great. So how do you see that? Because I can see authorization, governance, compliance, factoring in. There's a lot of stakeholders who have their fingers in the pie here. What, how do you see that? Is that something that you guys are looking at? Is that something that you're doing with the LLMs? Because again, what data is going in is one, but what's being used is another, right? So all these things, it's, it's very complicated. Yeah, I think that's a great point. Um, we saw a lot of data lakes become horizontal data stores, right? Where we fit into the picture is when you're going to fetch the data to feed it to a model, you need to make sure that the person, the entity that you're acting on behalf of, be that a machine or a human or whatever, actually has access to that data. And it's great that you bring up latency because one of the great parts about the model that we've chosen is that it is very low latency, mm. right? Um, Google themselves talk about certain latency specifications in their paper, but what they're talking about is actually for sort of their fully normalized version. But what we've done is we've created a sort of denormalized version that we call Auth said materialized. And our denormalized version of authorization gives you a single join with the total, author the total picture of authorization um, that you can use uh, to guard access to things. So getting you back to those single digit millisecond level access times. What's the benefit there, speed? So you control the quality access one, and then availability. So you hit two things, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but speed is is the primary driver. Yeah. Because the way we work, right? You can have a very rich, uh, you can have a rich tapestry of ways that people can get access to things, right? Let's take a bank account for example. You could be the account owner. Um, you could be an authorized entity. You might be the CFO for the company that owns the bank account. You might be in the finance department. You might be the, the rep from the bank who is responsible for that. So all of these things make this web of how people get access to data. But crawling that web, think of a spider crawling that web and trying to figure out, can I get there? Uh, crawling that web can be, you know, we, we make it as fast yeah. as possible, but it can still be arduous. So what we do is we take that whole web yeah. and we collapse it down to just these point-to-point -point connections between this person has access to this data. How do you guys engage customers and what's the secret sauce? Um, well, to date, I mean, that's a great, great question. You don't have to reveal the secret sauce, but what's the advantage? Why are you winning? Yeah, to date, we win um, based on our scalability. So we mostly work with larger customers. Um, they come to us, maybe they even try some of our competitors, and they go, they're just not working. Yeah. So we're going to use AuthZ because they've got things like Materialize that can make it even faster than anything our competitors can dream up. And they pick us because we have actually built it out and proven the scale uh, that gave Google these sort of superpowers yeah. for authorization. Yeah, it's great to take them off that paper. So the question I have for you is, if someone's watching right now and say, hey, you know, I'm, I got all this Gen AI, the, the, the top-down message has been, we are going to infuse Gen AI in all of our applications. Okay, great. Now the people got to make that happen. That's platform engineers to data folks to the app developers who are just, they're in their CI, CD pipelines. They shifted left for security, but 
what do they shift for for data? So this is now, okay, a mandate. When do they call you and why are you involved? That group there, they're all sitting there playing, what problem do they have? What smoke do they see? What fires are out there? Are you solving problems? Is it a nice to have? Is it a steroid? I mean, is it an aspirin or steroid? I mean, all these metaphors, but like, when does someone know to give you a call and where do you plug in? Yeah, like I say, for AI specifically, yeah. um, and for RAG, because that's today's technology, but in the future, maybe it's agents, right? But for today in RAG, you have a vector database and somebody needs access to some data that's in that vector database. The vector database will tell you, well, it matches based on these vectors, but you don't want to do a fuzzy match based on access control. You don't want to say, well, this person might have access. Their title sounds like they should be able to, to do it, right? So you need something really, really opinionated and really firm for the access control bit. And so as you're pulling data from this vector database, you're sending that information off to OTSED and saying, do they have access? Yes, no, do they have access? And only once you get the go-ahead from OTZ do you actually feed it into the model, into the context for the model. So you guys are accurate, not fuzzy, meaning hallucinations and or misfire, essentially. Mistakes. Yeah. Zero tolerance in the enterprise. It's, for, zero, right? it, it's a total disaster. Right? <laughs> and one of the really cool things about what we're doing is that it's one of the places, I, I, I call it this guardrails for AI. Yeah. It's one of the places that aren't going to get commoditized yeah. by AI. Because it, you can't ask the AI, hey, why don't you know? Why don't you figure out what you should have access to? It makes no sense. Um, so I, mean, I like the guardrails for AI because that's what everyone's talking about. Like security, security teams used to be the the team that said no until they put the guardrails in. Now devs can shift left. You see see what that done for, has done for security. We're seeing something similar for data. Uh, what's your vision going forward? Because you know guardrails sets the agenda. Now that the app devs are going to go crazy and build some great apps, infusing Gen AI into their apps. So Agentic is coming, Agentic Systems, agents, sub-agents, you know, there'll be agents of agents, teammates, and all that good stuff with delegation, totally legit. Um, when that steady state happens, what's your vision for your company? Yeah, I mean, we, we obviously do a lot more than AI, but if specifically in the AI space, I think um, guardrails for AI is really, really encapsulates what we're we're trying to do and what we're trying to help. And I think if you have the proper controls set up, you can kind of set those devs loose, right? If it's impossible for them to build an app that pulls some data that the end user shouldn't have access to, then they can kind of just run as fast as they want. All right, so you got the AI side with the rag. That's cool. That's going to be hot for everyone's working on that. Outside of that, where are the other areas you guys are adding value for customers? Yeah, um, like I said before, point-to-point -point sharing, marketplaces, um, You've got the, the, that, that complex web, that tapestry that we talked about earlier, that exists in more domains than just banking, right? Um, one of our customers, Turo, they originally were built around the concept that you would have one owner sharing one car. And what it turned out, it turned out just like Airbnb. So you had ownership groups with fleets of cars. And so they had to go and they had to create this ability to be able to manage the access control for the information about the cars, the cars themselves, right? Does the cleaner have access only at certain times? Um, do the owners always get access? So, so they had this, they, they ended up having to build this complex web of the relationships between the people and the data and the automobiles to replace that old sort of, uh, I wouldn't say naive, but starter model. Yeah. Um, and so, so those kinds of things are where we usually sort of parachute in and unlock those companies' abilities. And what's the consumption side of it is when you could engage with that customer? Uh, service, how much work's involved. Take us through a, a day in the life of how you deploy and how's the customer engage. Yeah, great question. Most of our customers are consuming from our hosted service. Um, but what we do a little bit differently with our hosted service is we go and deploy it right next to your workloads. And we call it offset dedicated. And we give you uh, sub millisecond access to your offset deployment because latency is, as you said, so yeah. critical uh, for authorization. So if you're running in, let's say, US East 2, we'll go and put a copy of our stack in US East 2 and we'll give you an encrypted channel back to our stack. So you consume it like it's infrastructure, but you buy it like it's SaaS. Um, so it's kind of the best of both worlds. Awesome. But we do also support people who have uh, on-premises or air-gapped or firewall deployments as well. Well, Drake, great to have you on theCUBE and congratulations on success. And congratulations on your round of funding. Just in the beginning, that Series A really kind of like this clock starts. <laughs> go to market, more customer support. So congratulations on that. We'll keep track of it. The last 30 seconds we have left here, to put a plug in for the company. Obviously the Series A just happened. If you want to share the amount, that's cool. What you're looking to do, you're hiring. Customers may be watching, give the pitch. Put yeah, a plug in. All of those things. Um, yeah, our Series A was 12 million. 
Um, it was led by a general catalyst with participation from other investors. Um, we are hiring in all areas. Uh, we have a pretty aggressive go-to-market hiring plan going into next year. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. Uh, we're super excited. Um, as a company, our philosophy is sort of keep it lean and sort of make sure that we're hitting all the right traction points and grow the company based on that instead of like, I see a lot of competitors try to just go to the finish line and pretend they're a big company already. Yeah. That's How many nice. employees do you guys have? We're at 24 right now. So small, small team. So opportunity for someone to come into a growing startup. Small for you. It feels <laughs> huge for us. Yeah. 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 Opportunity <laughs> to come in early, get in on the ground floor, yeah. meaningful equity, all the good stuff. Well, I really respect how you built your company. You know, you're very pragmatic, but but smart. Um, keep your eye on the prize. You've been there, done that. Love the scale side of it. And again, I think it's going to get, I mean, there's more data coming in there before. So, and with AI and all kinds of new things going on. So congratulations. Yeah. Thank all right. you so much. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Okay, I'm John Furrier, your host. We're here in New York City. This is where we bring all the action in Wall Street, Silicon Valley here in New York. I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching.